see what we got today. We have a sprayer. It's a Toro. 300 gallon sprayer. This machine is a 5600 Multi Pro. This is what it looks like. It's got the sprayer on the back. Alright, so the problem that they're having is you have these boom arms here which are controlled up there where the operator sits and common problem with these is these boom arms eventually will get weak and they won't go up and down properly they won't close properly and that's all controlled by this actuator here this is your actuator which extends out here and allows this thing to pivot here and go up and down to spray. Um, this one is getting weak. They said that the arm is sagging as they're spraying and it's not holding up anymore. Uh, these come in different, <clears throat> different sizes and variations. All right, so this one is a Glide Force Industrial Duty Linear Actuator. Now, when you order these, there's so many different sizes of these, different strokes, and uh, there's a different pound that they come in also. Now, you can get cheaper ones for on like $99 end that will support up to 200 pounds, even lower. Um, on something like that arm going up and down constantly, um, we probably wanted to get at least 500 pound minimum, even though the arm is not 500 pounds, but it's just constantly working up and down. And um, I think the one they have on there is probably a 200 pound actuator. So we went double on this one. This one I believe is 500 pounds. So, but when you're ordering these, there's different strokes that they come in. And the way to find out the stroke of this, you want to measure from the base up to the center of this hole while it's completely closed. And then you want to extend this all the way out to its fullest extent. And then you're going to measure from the base up to the center hole again when it's extended. You're going to take your highest number and you're going to subtract it from your lowest number. And whatever that equals will be the stroke actuator that you need. So basically today what I'm going to do is do a tutorial just on how to remove this. And when you buy a new actuator, a lot of times the actuator has this fitting on here. All right. Your new one, a lot of times, is not going to come with this adapter. So you will have to cut this and splice your new wires into this adapter here. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is pull this out. There's a little tab on there. You can get yourself a screwdriver. And there's a little tab here. You want to push up on that tab. All right, and then you can kind of stick it in the back here and just pry that down to pull that out like that all right next thing you're gonna have is on the back you're gonna have a nut here which if you come around to the front of it you're gonna see the bolt here now this is all green because this is a sprayer and there's all kinds of chemicals and you probably should have gloves on prevent yourself from getting this shit on your hands what you got is the end of your bolt there on that side and then over here you're gonna have a pin here which normally has a cotter pin in there where's it at right there the cotter pin is missing so you want to pull that cotter pin out and then you're just gonna tap this tap this pin out through the other side and that will allow this whole unit to drop down. It's pretty simple. So uh, I'm gonna take this nut and bolt off over here. 
don't really need to show you how to take a nut and bolt off. Get yourself a socket or a wrench. Looks like it's going to be a 9 16 You can get a hold back for, for the other side over there in case it spins. And then we're going to pop that out with the hammer. And we're going to drop this down. We already disconnected our wires. All right, there's our pump side by side. As you can see, the new one does not come with this adapter that the old one has on the end. <clears throat> so we are going to splice this and we are going to tie this adapter into this end. You're going to need some wire connectors and a scrimping, splicing tool here, stripping tool, and some tape. All right. And make sure you give yourself plenty of wire here to work with. Because remember, you got to strip some of this off. And if the old pump is no good, and strip down as much as you need. Always give yourself some extra wire. All right. So that's a good six, five inches, six inches. that now tie these back together just make sure you connect them the right way it's really hard to see on this other one this one actually has a red and a yellow um, red is always going to go to red so we are gonna and these together here now you're gonna put your wire connectors on two and being that this is a sprayer the machine will see a lot of liquid coming out of the back certainly around this actuator part um, I want those chemicals getting down in here so that's where we're gonna take our tape and we're just gonna for some extra security just wrap these both up kind of waterproof them a little bit All right, got them all taped up. This goes back on the same way it came off. If you remember in the beginning of the video, there was a uh, pin bolt that went through here with a cotter pin in it. And this side was the one with the uh, 9 16 nut and bolt. So uh, we're going to throw this back on. And don't forget, plug this wire back in. It should work. All right, there it is. Let's get back on. And I got my plug plugged back in, and uh, that should work a lot better now. Again, the other pump that the other actuator that came off of here was only rated at 250 pounds. This one's actually 562 pounds. It is a Glide Force. Got it off of Amazon. And uh, that's it. So that is how you take out a actuator on a Toro Multi Pro 5600 and reinstall a new one. Same thing would go with the other side if that one happened to go. Alright, see you next time.